All right, let's do an example. A couple of you had asked for some examples of uh, the method used in uh, 1.9. So from the book, uh, lots of, um, oops, you can't see those. Lots of problems here. So let's go through a couple. And uh, let me make this look right. So we'll do, say, A first. So this is uh, 3A. This is page 27. It's T X prime minus 3X equals 6 T4. Now uh, let's divide through by T. This is X prime minus 3 over T X equals 6 T cubed. So here's our differential equation. It's linear because X prime and X are to the first power. Uh, it doesn't matter if t is uh, funky. So this is a first order, linear, non-homogeneous. This is non-homogeneous, right? This is this term here messes things up. If it wasn't there, this would be pretty easy to solve. This will take an extra step. So the first step, and you should try this yourself. Um, you know, pause the video often. What do you do first? Yeah, that's correct. Uh, x prime minus 3 over t, x equals 0. We solve the easy one. How do we do this? Well, we separate variables. So x prime equals 3x over t. Uh, remembering that this is dx dt. So we multiply, multiply both sides by dt, divide by x stuff. We'll get dx over 3 equals 3t. Oh, whoops. Uh, dt. Again, this 3 can go anywhere you want, but I, I usually just keep stuff on the right-hand side. Integrate both sides. We get a, a log of absolute value of x on the left. We get a 3 Allen absolute value of t plus c. Don't forget your constant. Uh, exponentiate both sides. We'll get uh, absolute value of x equals e to the 3 Allen absolute value of t e to the c. Now, we can't do anything with this until we bring the 3 inside. So this would look like absolute value of x equals absolute value of t cubed e to the c. Pull off the absolute values. You've got your plus or minus e to the c absolute value. Right. Now, whether we take our absolute value off uh, would depend on the initial conditions. Um, so we could, we could leave it on for now and just have uh, x of t equals some constant, some positive or negative constant, absolute value of t uh, cubed. If we knew more about the problem, if we were only doing positive time, then we wouldn't need the absolute values. If uh, t does take on positive and negative values, then the absolute value is going to be important. But this, would be, this is the... Um, This is the homogeneous solution. All right. So uh, two, now we go and look at, um, suppose that A is actually uh, a function. All right. um, time the absolute value. And we plug this back in and see what we get. Uh, and maybe just to simplify this, we'll do uh, suppose T is positive so that we can think of this as just t cubed. This is usually the case for applications. So in this case, um, if we substitute it back into our original equation, then we're going to have a uh, product rule, a prime t cubed plus 3 a t squared. This is dx dt. Right, this is our x prime. And then minus 3 over t times a of t t cubed equals 6 t cubed. And the idea is that uh, when we simplify this, that these two terms cancel, and we're going to have a condition on a prime. And this condition ends up to be pretty easy. 
a prime is 6, so a is 6t plus c. I'm just recycling uh, that letter. So what is this for? This is part of our supposition. The idea is that x of t equals 6t plus c t cubed. Right? And probably something worth thinking about here is, you know, look at what happens. This is 6t to the fourth um, plus c t cubed. This is the solution to the homogeneous equation. So this is the extra bit that allows us to satisfy uh, the uh, non-homogeneous uh, term. Right? So there we are. That's, a, that's, a, that's an example.